Tell me about that. As long as I have a ball in my hands, I feel alive. Kind of like how I feel right now. I'm staying here. I got work to do. Work? The NFL's not going to draft some dude from the 1AA school in Iowa. There were other offers. I called every team in the NFL. No one's interested. Can I get one of your applications? I promised that I would take care of you and the kids. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. This is your dream? Don't give up on it. Football. Yeah, they didn't pick me. I pick you. I pick you too. Kurt Warner. You got the whole package, kid. And the world just needs more time to see it. He came up with this whole arena concept. Arena football. It's like a circus. People love the circus. I like the circus. You pay me for a touchdown? I also pay you to win. Oh, this is going to be fun. Hey, Kurt. We've been trying to reach you. I'm sorry, who are you? I'm with the Rams. Rick Hong here for Hollywood First Look. Today, I'm with Sir Darius Blaine, and we are talking his movie, American Underdog. Hey, congratulations on this, man. I love, you know, I love, see, you know, I love seeing you in everything. I love seeing you in this, especially, you know, this Kurt Warner movie. So I was wondering, you know, like, did you know the Kurt Warner story prior to like coming to set and joining, you know, joining the production? Yeah, I, so I, I had heard rumblings of like Kurt's humble beginnings um, story, you know, when I was a kid and stuff, watching them um, and the greatest show on turf, you know, when I was like 12 years old, but I didn't know the depth um, and and the lengths that he had gone to uh, to make it where he was until I got a call from um, Andrew Irwin back in October of last year. And then I looked into the story and my mind was kind of blown. I was like, wow, that is the, the greatest underdog story maybe I've ever heard in sports. So uh, I, you know, I did all my homework and everything and we got to set, you know, I was ready to rock and roll, but yeah, incredible, incredible story of uh, zero to hero for sure. Well, okay, so how was it getting to set? Because, you know, you have a lot of fun scenes with Zach Levi. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm wondering if it's one of the first few times that you come to set and you're like, oh, wow, you know, someone that's actually like my height and my size. Yeah, that's a rarity, <laughs> man. I never I never get to look anybody like in the eye. You know, I'm six, four and a half and, and Zach's six, four as well. And uh, so it was it was cool getting there and, and uh, you know, being with somebody my size, but um, also somebody that has such a full and open heart. Uh, Zach and I have a lot of mutual friends. Uh, he's just fun loving and, you know, always, always goofing around like me. And so it, it was, it was great having somebody that matches your energy and your stature at the same time. You know, you're always a buff guy, but I don't know if coming mm -hmm. to this one, you know, um, I mean, I know you also get cast as football players or jocks or sport, mm -hmm. you know, sports guys sometimes, mm -hmm. but I don't know yeah. if you decided to bulk up a little bit or lean down mm -hmm. or they were like, Hey, you're perfect the yeah. way that you are. I actually packed on about 20, 20 pounds. Um, in real life, my, my cousin is actually an offensive lineman. Uh, he's a really, really big boy. Um, but I wanted to kind of add some, some, some color and some texture to the character. So I, I put on about 20 pounds. I did the movie around like 260 pounds. I picked Kurt's brain um, quite a bit and me and Mike Hudna actually talked through Kurt and Brenda, you know, so sometimes he would FaceTime or, or, or call them or whatever. And I had an opportunity to talk to him then, um, you know, his big thing was to make sure that, you know, I got the belt buckles right and that his truck was very visible in the movie. And I think we, uh, we accomplished both. Yeah. <laughs> Well, how is it meeting Kurt, talking with him? Because, you know, I, I, he's been one of my heroes growing up as a kid. You know, yeah. I grew up in Nebraska. I worked at the same grocery oh, no store way. chain as, as him. So, like, I know, Whoa. you know, like, when I met him and Brenda, I even did a little jingle, and they knew the grocery right. store jingle, which made me yeah. laugh. So, That's like, amazing. you know, so for me, I was blown away. How about for you meeting Kurt Warner and Brenda Warner? Kurt and Brenda, Brenda I, I can't say enough about, you know, how big of a, a heart each of them has uh, for people. They're the sweetest, kindest, most humble, um, you know, superstars I've probably ever met. Uh, they were on set every day um, just to be there because they were amazed, you know, that their their life was was their life story was being told. This is definitely a rags to riches uh, story about faith, for sure. Um, and I always say you can't fake faith. Um, and so this is a it's a real tangible thing. Uh, faith actually ends up becoming like a tangible 
figure in the in the movie because you see it at every turn. Um, you know, we're all met with adversity at times in our lives, and and you know what becomes heroic is how we respond to that adversity. And I think that at every turn, uh, Kurt and Brenda they they really leaned, leaned on their faith and leaned on each other and, and families, faith, family, and football. You know, you can find American Underdog playing in theaters now. Kurt Warner out of the Arena League. It's one of those stories that's too good for the movies. It's perfect to guy here. He was bagging groceries five years ago. You go out there and you show the world what I've known all along. You were born for this. This is my time. I know who I am and I know why I'm here.